Now, this story that I want to talk about with Bill O'Reilly and Stephen A. Smith, I'm doing for one reason. If the name were Trump instead of Emhoff in this story, it would be all over the news right now. And yeah, Trump's running for president and Emhoff is married to the woman who's running for president. But still, um, Daily Mail, echoed by the New York Post, has a story. And I know Post, Daily Mail, but just listen. Um, Doug Emhoff, Kamala Harris's husband, accused of striking a woman he was on a date with at the Cannes Film Festival back in 2012. They say they have three friends of the woman who talked to them about this, that she had told them this afterwards. One is a male, uh, at least one of them is a female. Uh, the guy says that she called him from the car with Doug, that maybe they had been drinking, and he didn't like how she talked to the valet to get to the front of the line. He smacked her, she smacked him back. Brett Kavanaugh uh, was obviously running for the Supreme Court. I think it was around that time, actually. And mm -hmm. I remember her wearing all black and saying she was wearing all black. And I wore black today in support of all survivors of sexual assault or abuse. And it was a hashtag, believe survivors, et cetera, et cetera. And so when you do mm -hmm. something like that, it's going to be politicized. And if people believe you've politicized it, the second they get an opportunity to politicize something against you or unfavorable to you, they are going to pounce on that. You are not going to hear anything from Me Too, Time's Up, or any of them at all. Nothing. But if it were a Republican or a conservative, they would be denying the person accused of due process because that's what they do. Unless mm. it's someone on our side. So what I've just told you yeah. is absolutely true. I hate that about this country right now. It is the worst thing about America that the media has embraced the denial of due process for headlines, for clicks, for money. Chris Cuomo calling out the media? What? This is a surprise to me, but it's not. It's like it's becoming too blatant at this point, man. I think uh you know, I've been watching CNN, I watch Fox, News Nations to me is in the middle. I think they still lean left, but I think they're more neutral than CNN pretends to be. And as you follow from the intro, Chris Cromo called out something that many people know to be true about our mainstream media. It's too Trump focused. And for the fact that the media is too Trump focused, they miss a lot of things. They're so worried about fact checking Trump, fact checking Trump, fact checking JD Vance that they ignore fact checking Kamala Harris. The media wants you to believe in this perception that the reason why they don't fact check Kamala Harris and um, Tim Walls is because they don't lie at all. So they're always telling the truth until you go online, people bring up the receipts. Hey, look, here's proof of what J.D. Vance is saying here. Here's proof of what J.D. Vance is saying here. CNN's own fact checkers say, hey, look, CNN, uh, Tim Walls, this is all the lies he said. He exaggerated this. I wrote it down because I noticed the media coddles Democrats a lot, right? They use things to describe lies, right? For instance, when Donald Trump exaggerates a problem, they call it as a lie, right? But when a Democrat over-exaggerates a problem, oh, it was overstated. Oh, 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 he misspoke. They misspoke. They always have some, like, some type of, they always try to play these little word games to soften the impact. Like, they still fact-check the, the Democrat, but... They use it in a softer tone so you don't feel as, I guess, emotionally reactive to what they said. And a damning story came out, a story that the MSNBC, uh, MB, an MSNBC writer, producer, amidst network has made their viewers dumber is indistinguishable from the Democratic Party. And many voters feel this way. And, and we all can agree, MSNBC, yeah, obvious. Kenny, water's wet. We understand this. I understand this. But... Look at more subtle ways that CNN and all other left-wing me media websites do it, like ABC, CBS. The fact that they're so intent, to, like the journalists in the moment, the moderators, for example, are so like aware of Trump. They're like it's like they're hyper focused on Trump to the point where Trump can't even take a toe out of line, and they get on it. But Tim Walz is able to run in circles around the stage, do backflips, because they're not paying attention to Walz. They're only really, like, they're like they're kind of paying attention to Walz, but most of the time you know they're focused on every word that comes out of a Republican's mouth so they can fact check, fact check. In reality, fact check is not fact checking anymore. Fact check used to mean 
Can we verify there's proof or some type of validity to the statements you're making? That's what fact checks used to mean. Nowadays, fact check means, hey, I want to pre-prescribe a, a narrative around these facts to cast doubt, to, to make the, the person's claim less credible. That's what fact checking has become in this day and age. And Scott Jennings had an amazing clip that I found that it kind of exposed the media's inconsistencies for how they apply so-called fact check. Let's take a look. Okay, so everybody seems to be worried about J.D. Vance and dishonesty or Donald Trump and dishonesty. I never hear the same concern about Harris and the lies that she tells about Trump or in Walls himself, who gave the most disastrous response to a question about his own dishonesty about being in Tiananmen Square that I've ever heard. So I was in Hong Kong and China during the democracy protests went in. In a debate, he also did the same thing with Dan Abash when questioned about dishonesty a couple of months ago. And effectively, what he has said is, sorry, guys, I'm too dumb to tell the truth. I mean, he called himself a knucklehead. I've not been perfect, and I'm a knucklehead at times. I have bad grammar. This is a guy who holds himself up to be a school teacher and a coach. Is that the life lesson he's giving the kids that are under his care? Hey, you can lie, and then you can just kind of slough it off as being, you know, too dumb to tell the truth. I, I, I think it's, we spend 99% of our time going down rabbit holes about Vance and Trump and honesty in campaigns, and we spend no time, no time at all, holding Walls and Harris to the same standard, and I don't understand it. And now we're back with the segment with Chris Cuomo. As you saw, clear as day, like, if you're being intellectually honest, if I told you, hey, Someone has a different standard of how they criticize or critique or uh, scrutinize one individual over the other. Let's say it was based on skin color. You will call it racism. You will call it discrimination. But it seems like the left, they practice discrimination where they know they'll is not socially, I say, negative for them to do so. For instance, if you discriminate on who you want to date or marry, that's fine. That's discrimination that's tolerated in our society, which, as it should be, right? But political discrimination doesn't get as much leeway or as much scrutiny in the public eye. And this is what's going on right now. Like you, Based on your political affiliation, journalists take a different approach with you compared to someone else of a more favorable political leaning. And when you have an a, a institution like journalism overwhelmingly dominated by liberals, this stuff cannot happen. This kind of... Uh, discrepancies in approach cannot happen because my main criticism for the mainstream media and then we'll get into the Chris Cuomo clip is the fact that they are not consistent in how they apply their so-called fact check if they were just more consistent I'll have less of a problem of them doing this I'll have a less of a problem of them interjecting in the debate but when it's seen like they're using their position as leverage to sway the odds in the favor of their preferred candidate, that's when I have a problem with journalism. And this M. Hoff story, regardless of the validity of it, because when Kavanaugh, when Justice Kavanaugh was accused of uh, grape and, uh, and all this other stuff, the left went ham. You couldn't go a day without knowing what the hell was going on in the Kavanaugh trial when he was being appointed to, to the Supreme Court. But all of a sudden, second gentleman of the United States of America get accused of being hit, uh, hitting a, a, a girlfriend or something in 2012. That doesn't make headlines. That doesn't, that doesn't break anywhere. If any of Donald Trump's children was caught in a scandal or an allegation like that, you know it would be all over the news. It's believe all women until it becomes convenient to the Democratic Party. And this is the bias in narratives that I keep pointing out. That there's bias in journalism. By, like, end of the day, if, you, if there's going to be bias, if bias is going to be dis- overt, then it's impossible for me to truly, truly trust an institution that's overwhelmingly dominated by the left. But I digress. Enough of my rambling. Let's get into this clip of them discussing this story. Josh, um, what did you believe the right standard was here? How, how credible do you believe this story is? I think it's very credible. Otherwise, we wouldn't have published it. Uh, you do not get, as, as you were just saying, very often people coming forward named. And the reason is they're worried about retaliation. These are very powerful people we're talking about. But what we have here is three friends all saying they were told the same thing, two of them contemporaneously. This woman, Jane, we're calling her, she called one of the friends immediately after the incident. That's what this, um, this friend told me. And that's backed up by the other two. And it's not just that. 
We have documents as well. We have messages and a photograph, which evidence the relationship, evidence the trip happened. There's also footage from the event. Before he continues, with Brett Kavanaugh, they didn't have none of this. The lady that accused Brett Kavanaugh, she couldn't even recall when it happened, how it happened, when, how, where, who, what they were doing. She couldn't provide any context. She just made an accusation. And if it wasn't for the fact that Brett Kavanaugh kept detailed records of where his uh, uh, his his about where he goes where happened timelines it could have been a worse story but that makes news but this doesn't make news where there's more evidence than what was with the allegations against Kavanaugh but it's not news where OMG makes these exposés highlighting how oh look we exposed this CEO we exposed this DEI practices this is what they're doing in this company Look what they're doing at MSNBC. It's like it, it spreads amongst people on the right or people who are adjacent to the right. And sometimes independents get it. But it seems like Democrats never find this stuff. Democrats never come across this stuff. And when Democrats do come across this stuff, they try to downplay it. They try to downplay it. They try to minimize it. Their go-to tactic. I, I, I don't understand. But we'll continue. Which shows that she and Doug were there. And you reached out to the woman who was supposedly a New York lawyer, and she did not deny it. She refused to comment. You reached out to the campaign. They didn't deny it. They refused to comment. Stephen A. Smith. My question is, how, how long have you been working on this story? How, how soon or how recent was it that you received word of these allegations that are being leveled against uh, the potential first man? So I've been working on investigations into Doug Emhoff for a little while. I mean, you can see, you know, so I work for the U.S. website DailyMail.com, and we published in August a story about Doug having an affair with his uh, his daughter's teacher, grade school teacher at the time. And, you know, the funny part is feminist, right? Like, yeah, yeah, look, this is why I have a problem with feminists, right? This is why I, I recommend any man, don't, don't date a feminist, don't marry a feminist, because you can't marry someone that inherently sees you as evil, right? And they'll fall for a man like this, correct? And something my father always told me was, the most dangerous man is an emotional man, a man who cannot control himself, right? And he's supposed to be the new age, modern masculinity, I think what's wrong with society is not the fact that we have too much masculinity. It's because we have far less masculinity. A boy is pretty much, if he doesn't have a father at his house, when he goes to school, surrounded by nothing but women. He goes to college, surrounded nothing by women, nothing but women. Women are the, the ones influencing a lot of these young males. If you see the communities that produce the most criminals, single mothers are the number one. Like That's, the number one, that's one of the biggest factors in, in determining whether you're going to be a like potentially get involved in criminal activity being raised by a single mother look at all the rapists 68 percent by a single mother so like think about it if if toxic masculinity is the reason for all the evils in the world how is it that men who have limited exposure to other men raised by nothing but women i'm talking about the black community they're committing almost 50 percent of the crime how is 13% of the population, a population raised majority, born to majority, single mothers, they produce kid, men that commit 50% of the crimes while they're 30% of the population? Make it make sense. This, like, all I have to do is look at reality. Because feminists have a theory, but when you look at reality, it proves feminist theory wrong. But they still follow this stuff. Because at the end of the day, in this day and age, with the downside of religion, no one wants to believe in religion anymore, especially people on the liberal left. Their political ideology has become a religion in of itself. This is why Democrats' friends are more likely to block you if they find out that you have an opposing political view from themselves. Democrats are the least tolerant people in America, bar none. But they want to sit here and pretend that they're so virtuous. Huh, you're virtuous in name only, Democrat, liberal, leftist. You pretend to be tolerant, but in reality, you're intolerant. Because the minute you hear a perspective that's different from yours, you want to go down to name calling. You want to call people liars. Oh, you're spreading your conspiracy theories. This is why your go-to thing is calling people's names. Slander. Because many Democrat men, this is from my personal experience, y'all very passive-aggressive ass dudes. 
Y'all want to call people names. You want to call me a coon. But you don't have an argument. And this is the problem. You want to go, you want to go demonize Trump. You're going to do all oh, Trump is bad for women, all this stuff. And the men they hold, uphold as whole oh, men. So all men should be like this. Y'all not demonizing him. Y'all not holding him accountable. But let his affiliation been Republican. Oh, front page story. You want to make him an example of what's wrong with masculinity today in this day and age. But because there's someone on your side, oh, silence. This is tribalism at its finest. But they keep pretending, oh no, Republicans, conservatives, they're in an echo chamber. It, just admit it, Democrats. You hold Republicans to a higher standard than you hold your own side. Look at actions, not words. I digress. Her nanny. Um, so I've been investigating him for a while. Uh, this story I've also been working on for several weeks. So, you know, this was a uh, thorough investigation, something that I put a lot of work into. If it were Trump or anyone related to him, it would be on every TV show that is on right now. And that's why I, I think in the interest of fairness, you should look at it. I don't blame you for bringing up the story because in fairness to Donald Trump, which is not something you hear me or most people say all the time, it is absolutely true. If this were him, it would be all over the place. It would be printed. It would be publicized everywhere. We also have to take mm. into account 2018 when then-Senator Kamala Harris, um, obviously when, when, when the whole Brett Kavanaugh situation, not as far back as 2018, mm -hmm. but when Brett Kavanaugh uh, was obviously running for the Supreme Court, I think it was around that time, actually, and mm -hmm. I remember her wearing all black and saying she was wearing all black, and I wore black today in support of all survivors of sexual assault or abuse. And it was a hashtag, believe survivors, et cetera, et cetera. And so when you do mm -hmm. something like that, it's going to be politicized. And if people believe you've politicized it, the second they get an opportunity to politicize something against you or unfavorable to you, they are going to pounce on that. Common sense, bro. Like, if you're just thinking, like, common sense just means consistent. How consistent or how congruent you are to the things that you get mad about, right? If I find out, like, Republicans are voting uh, in mass and doing things that are at the displeasure of the American people, I'm gonna get mad just as mad. I get mad all the time when they see when I see them spending billions of dollars on foreign aid, and I'm like, "Yo, y'all spend more money on foreign aid than domestic aid." I bet, and it's look at it. I can take what they did with FEMA as them foreign aid. You helping foreigners? They not they don't originate from this country. They wasn't born in this country. They came from outside the country. They come into this country and using my money to give to them. America last agenda, right? But you want to have this moral high ground. Oh, look at the violent rhetoric from the right. But you are putting the same, you have the same violent rhetoric. You can't, you can't demonize someone else for what you're doing. Maxine Waters, get in their face. Rough them up. Let them know they're not welcome here. Threats to democracy, calling Donald Trump Hitler. You, putting in, you generate images, putting on the front page of news outlets. And then when Democrat men come out, and try to attempt to assassinate him. Y'all encourage it. Y'all get mad that they miss. This is a reaction from the left. And then they have the same one. And then if, if, if we say anything even mildly that could be interpreted as aggressive. Oh, my God. Look at your violent rep. Like, no. I'm tired of this cry bullying from the left. That's what you are. You cry bullying. You ever met a person that they do something? Everyone, oh, it's just a joke. It's just a joke. You make the same joke, now they butt hurt. Now they mad. They can dish it, but they can't take it. That's what a liberal represents in this day and age currently, especially uh, liberals my age, millennials and younger. This is, this is the perception I have of them. And you can't say it's due to ignorance because I'm born from a community that votes 90% Democrat. I'm born from a community that is considered the most loyal Democrat constituency. So when I talk about liberals, when I talk about Democrats, I know what I'm talking about. I've been around them all my life. So liberals in the comment section, you may not like what I have to say, but it's true. This is the image you give off. Condescending, know-it-alls. And then when you get proven wrong, your pride will not even let you be humble enough to admit you're wrong. So you keep, you keep opening your mouth. You keep talking. You keep making excuses for it. And that's what you saw in the CNN clip that I showed you. Immediately after Scott Jennings laid out the case, good points. The, 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 the black dude next to him, I forgot his name already, already trying to make excuses for why the Democrats, why they do that for the Democrats. Make it make sense. 
Let's wrap up this video. You are not going to hear anything from Me Too, Time's Up, or any of them at all. Nothing. But if it were a Republican or a conservative, they would be denying the person accused of due process because that's what they do. Unless mm. it's someone on our side. So what I've just told you yeah. is absolutely true. I hate that about this country right now. It is the worst thing about America that the media has embraced the denial of due process for headlines, for clicks, for money it is disgraceful. I, I will openly confess, I would absolutely positively love to disagree with Bill O'Reilly. I cannot. What he said was right on the money in terms of what has transpired with our media, its coverage, uh, in some instances, in terms of the bias, in, in terms of the favoritism, in terms of the lack of neutrality and, and, and the absence of due process. The lack of neutrality. I think that's the biggest point there. I agree with Stephen A. When someone's right, is if I believe someone's right, I agree. I don't care about their political political affiliation. I don't care about their skin color. I don't care about their gender. I don't care about their sexual orientation. If you're right, you're right. But Democrats, liberals, especially in the media, they play these games. Oh, these these people, right wing, right wing activists. Trump operative says they always have to preface something as if to signal to their audience, hey. We already trained you. If you hear anything related to Trump, anyone adjacent to Trump, we all believe they are what? Liars. But 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 Trump supporters are in a cult. No, you're a pot calling the kettle black. This, this is fallacy. Now I'm, I, I call it, this is my fallacy, the liberal projection fallacy. Liberals project on you what they are guilty of. This is cultish behavior. 89% of the time when media covered Donald Trump, it's negative. Is it true or false? True. Okay. So if you're only listening to left-wing sources like CNN, they lean left. MSNBC, they're definitely left. ABC leans left. NPR leans left. PBS leans left. These news outlets outnumber right-wing news outlets, at least the mainstream ones. Fox News is the only one that it comes to mind right now. New York Post, they don't really, they're not a media company. They're a news outlet company. Those two are outnumbered by the five. So liberals go, I got three sources. Only Fox News is covering it. It must be fake news. No. You, you just pick three sources from the same side. That's not, a, that's not a fact check. But this is the reality we live in. They're just more liberal journalists, and they leverage their positions to push a narrative. And this is what this story is highlighting. It shows that our media has a lack of neutrality. And in a, an environment currently with a lack of neutrality, the only thing you could uh, responsibly do is accept that everyone has bias. And the people who should be trusted are people who are more upfront and honest about their bias. Because that's the only thing the media can do right now to even save whatever sliver of credibility it has left. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I'd like to hear your thoughts on this matter. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. I appreciate you guys watching the end of the video. And I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace.